Hi, you moles. I hope you've had a wonderful day. Welcome to another episode of The Creakers. Um, I've had a great day here. We've been um, chatting to all the teachers on um, Microsoft Teams video chat and enjoying the sunshine and getting all your work ready for next week. Um, I'm really enjoying seeing all your work coming through. So thank you very much for that. And well done for all the effort you've been putting in at home. Um, if there's anything you want to tell me or send me, just let me know. Okay, um, and I'm really enjoying seeing everything you're doing. It's fantastic. So um, let's start again on chapter 18. The Bog Tavern. Grunt, Guff, Scratch and Sniff creeped through the walleb, carrying Mr Dunkston's stinking coat. His rottenness be awful pleased with Grunt when he sniffs this, said Grunt. And Guff, said Gruff, Guff. And Scratch, said Scratch. And Sniff, added Sniff happily. Sorry, Scratch, he added quickly added. They all wound their way through the crooked, winding, twisted tunnels deeper into their backyard woods world. Shall we stop us off on the ways for snacks? asked Guff, hopefully rubbing his rumbling round belly. No, you flabby rotbag, we be getting this to his rottenness right away, Grunt barked. But Grunt, we's be having a long night, what with that crafty kiddrelin. We at least deserve some sludge. Guff pleaded, giving Scratch a little nudge. Oh yeah, some old sludge will go down the trick, Scratch agreed. All wrong, all wrong! We stopped for a quickie bit, but just one slot, Grunt said sternly, caving in to the demands of Guff's greedy belly. They turned a sharp left, which went right, and almost walked straight into the wall of the tunnel. But just as their pointed noses were about to bosh into it, a brand new hole twisted open. Entwined tree roots and mud cracked apart, and a new path was revealed. As they creeped through the hole, a great raucous sound filled the new tunnel. It came from a building in the distance. I say a building, but it was more like a pile of bricks, rubble, smashed glass and bent steel that might have once been a building, but had long since been demolished. There we go. Swinging from the top of the ruin was a bent, rusty old sign which read, The Bog Tavern. The Creakers had banded together to bring this whole derelict building site down into the Walleb, and it was now the place they all went to have a slop or two of sludge after a long night of creaking. The Bog Tavern was always busy. As they stepped through the doorless doorway, the glorious stench of damp and mould filled their snotty nostrils and they heard a discordant song from the Creaker playing a strange creaky mute instrument in the corner. It had the bashed up keys of an old piano, the dented horn of a trombone, three bent pipes from some bagpipes, one broken guitar string and a little triangle on top, all cobbled together into one. Oh looks, they got Belch playing the bagpipes tonight. He's awful, he is. Can't play a single note wrong, Guff said, rubbing his claws together gleefully. He loved the bog tavern. Grant trudged to the bar and a respectful hush fell over the rotten room as every stinky creaker in the place realised who had just set Claw inside. Will it be Grunt? barked Squelch the landlord, breaking the silence. Four slops, Grant replied, and make them quicks, we got some pool and business. And some pork cut scratchings, Guff added to the order, followed by one of his stinky bum trumps. Wrong way! Anything for the king's most untrusted creakers, Squelch muttered with a dip of his bald, scabby head. They made their way through the crowds of creakers who were busy sharing creaking stories. I nearly got dusted last night, one old creaker called Budge said as he gulped the last mouthful of sludge from his glass. Chubby kidderling fell out of bed and landed on me. I broke the rotten things full so I didn't wake up, see? So there I was, trapped with this heavy lump of a kidder on my leg, and then the bright star had come in. What do you, What did you do, Bulge? asked Bath, the wrinkly creaker sharing his table. Had to gnaw my own leg off, didn't I? And, and with that, Bulge plonked his black leg on the table, and all the creakers who were listening cheered and clinked their goblets together in celebration. Everyone loved it when a creaker escaped being dusted. I'll stick it back on somehow, Bulge laughed. There you go, there's him sticking his leg onto the table. Oh, gross. Bunch of twitnits, Gruff huffed, 
grunt huffed grumpily as he and Guff found a space at an empty, ta empty table. Oh, that's a bit tongue twister. Scratch and Sniff made their way to join Belch on the bog pipes and began singing along to all the songs they didn't know. You're always rotten in the face when you comes in here, Guff said to Grunt as he perched his bottom on an upturned stool. Look at them all, all these useless lumps of creaky flesh, wasted away their hours in here telling nonsense waffle to each other. It's just what we do, Grunt, Guff said. Not me, not Grunt, Grunt whispered, I be wanting more. Guff started. More? More and what? More and creaking, said Grunt. It'd always be the same, sneaking up there into the human world where everything's right way up, stealing their rubbish night in and night out, never getting to see any creakilings back home. He pulled out a little photo of his hideously ugly creaky children to show Guff. Ah, oh, they get more disgusting every year. Guff said politely. Thanks, I know, just like their mother. Grunt sighed fondly oh, at the photo before tucking it away. Will this be the creak away, Grunt? Creaking is what we does. It puts muck on the table and mulch over our heads, Guff said. Have you never thought in your noggin what it might be like not having to creak about? Not having to do the nasties up there? Not stealing things that isn't ours? Grunt replied. Four quick slops, interrupted Squelch before Guff could answer, spilling most of their sludge on the table as he put their overflowing goblets down. Made them just the way you like, Grunt. Rotten eggs, cheese flakes, broccoli juice, and I put some extra snot drops in for you tonight too. On the house, Squelch added as he wiped his nose. Cheers, Gruff grinned, stuffing the whole packet of pork scratchings in his mouth, along with the foil wrapping. Cheers, Grunt muttered and made to swig, take a swig of his sludge. But before the chipped glass touched his cracked lips, the whole building site around them began to shake. So it began to rumble. The rumble became a shake. The shake became a jolting wobble quake. Broken bricks broke again and fell to the ground. Slops of sludge smashed and spilled. The cracked glass in the window shattered completely. Takes over, ordered Grunt as he dived on top of Lucy's dad's stinking jacket to protect it. Grunt, cried Scratch. Guff, called Sniff. What's going on? yelled Guff over a mouthful of pork scratching. There you go. Oh, give you that. There you go. Ooh. The rumbling slowly calmed down. The shaking settled. The wallet lab quake was over and the whole bog tavern was silent in shock. What the muck was that, Grunt? Rumbled Squelch, the landlord, as he climbed out from under his bar. Grunt got to his feet, brushing debris from the precious stinking coat. That, he replied grimly, is a kidderling in the wallet. Chapter 19, Creaker Land. Lucy sprinted down the tunnel, following it deeper into the wallet. The screams were growing louder with every step she took. She rounded a crooked corner and the spider leg tunnel opened up into a great cave stretching out far above her head where the roots of trees poked through mud and dirt. The sticky ground beneath her feet suddenly became a row of neat polished green paving stones and this path led down to something so strange Lucy had to take off her swimming goggles to get a proper look at it. Right in front of her eyes was a ginormous underground theme park. It was massive, bigger than any fairground or theme park Lucy had ever seen. Further along the path was a giant entrance with bright, shiny turnstiles and a curly, swirly sign over the top that said, Welcome to Creakerland, the no fun fair, where dreams definitely don't come true and the most miserable place below the earth. There you go, there's the sign. But Lucy knew that in the Wolleb, this meant that this was a fun place. A place where dreams do come true. But whose dreams? Lucy asked herself quietly, so the Wolleb wouldn't hear her thoughts. Her mind was interrupted by the screams again as the carriages of an enormous roller coaster whizzed by and did a huge loop-the-loop -loop high up over her head, the track skimming the cavernous rooty roof above. 
The seats of the roller coaster were packed with passengers dressed in their pyjamas and 90s, all waving their hands high above their heads. And that's when Lucy realised two things. The passengers in the car roller coaster cars were all grown-ups. And it was these grown-ups who were screaming. But they weren't screaming in pain or fear. They were screaming with laughter and happiness. Lucy saw their faces as the roller coaster shot by. They were giddy with excitement. Wide, ch wide childish smiles stretched across their faces as they waved their arms in the air. What the chickens, Lucy thought, as she rushed down the shiny green path to the turnstile and gave it a push. It spun round and whacked her on the bottom, shoving her into Creakerland. She was suddenly hit by the most delicious sweet smell. Lucy closed her eyes and breathed it in deeply. It was the smell of sugar and caramel, freshly baked cookies and steaming hot chocolate. It was the nicest thing she'd smelled since being down here and seemed completely out of place in this rotten world. As she looked around, she couldn't believe what she was seeing. There were rides and roller coasters that looked so mind-bogglingly fun that she found herself being drawn towards them, desperately wanting to ride them. Some had stomach-churning twists, soaring so high it hurt her neck to keep looking at them. There was merry-go-round that whizzed around so fast and didn't stop until the grown-ups riding it couldn't hold on any longer. They just let go, flying into the sky, landing in huge piles of pink fluff. Candy floss, Lucy whispered in amazement as she watched the grown-ups eat their way out of these pink fluffy piles of deliciousness which were as tall as the houses of Whittington. There were popcorn machines on the rooftops of all the buildings, continuously popping fresh buttery popcorn which burst into the air and felt like warm, delicious popcorn snow over their heads. There you go. Okay, we're going to have to stop there for today. Um, I hope you have a wonderful day tomorrow, and I'll see you for another episode of The Creakers. Bye-bye.